Well, thanks. Uh, it's good to be out here, by the way. Thank you, John, and the team. Don't worry about me, but I just want to, th I was thanking you uh, for allowing us to be here in North Valley. Uh, animal rescue group that's uh, been around since, what, 1999 you've been at this, and it's a good reminder um, of how, uh, how integral uh, an organization like this is to our disaster uh, response efforts and disaster recovery efforts. Uh, John was just reminding me something most of us don't need to be reminded of, uh, and that is the people uh, that are so attached and understandably so to their animals, their pets, oftentimes will put their lives at risk in order to preserve and protect uh, the animals. And as a consequence, tragically, we've lost people's lives because they didn't feel that there was a home or an opportunity uh, to take care of their animals in a time of emergency. So this organization plays a profoundly important role in addressing that issue and ultimately advancing the effort of saving people's lives uh, and organizing a construct where people can get back to some semblance of normalcy in their lives uh, once the emergency is behind us, once people are out of their shelters, uh, and once people are able to begin to rebuild their lives and bring their families uh, and their animals and pets back. Uh, so I just was you know, here out of respect and appreciation uh, for your work uh, and out of gratitude uh, for the thousands and thousands of people who have been benefited over the course of decades uh, by their largesse uh, and by their contribution. Uh, we also spent a little bit of time up in paradise, uh, been back relatively consistently over the last couple of years. Uh, going back to last time President Trump visited the state of California, we visited together uh, Paradise just uh, weeks after uh, the fires. Uh, of course, today we met with the president, uh, talked about the status of over 28 large fire complexes here in the state of California, some 16,500 firefighters battling these blazes all throughout the state from the northern part of the state up in Siskiyou, bleeding in uh, to the Oregon border and, of course, down at the Mexican border, almost a thousand miles separating some of these complexes. The good news is we've seen a lot of progress in the last week or so, and in particular, we are being blessed right now by Mother Nature a little bit uh, with the winds calming down and the conditions becoming a little bit more favorable in terms of our suppression efforts. Still addressing needs of 44,000 people that have been evacuated here in the state uh, and obviously uh, concerned about the over 4,000 uh, 200 structures that we know have been destroyed so far. And we say so far because when we get back in uh, into these parts of the state uh, where we haven't been able to actually assess the damage, we anticipate that structure damage to go significantly up. Uh, I want to thank the leadership at Paradise in particular uh, for their efforts to try to get people back and rebuilding uh, their homes. Uh, it was great to see a one-stop shop in that old Bank of America facility uh, where people uh, are getting over-the-counter uh, support and are getting kind of quick response that's necessary in order to rebuild lives and rebuild this remarkable community of paradise. And uh, I said this a few years back and I'll say it again, uh, we want to be here in the long haul uh, for paradise and the community and the county. Uh, we recognize uh, once the cameras go, uh, once the fires are suppressed, uh, that's when the real work begins of rebuilding lives, not just removing debris, but rebuilding homes uh, and bringing families back together, rebuilding schools, rebuilding a sense of community, a sense of place and purpose. And so the state of California is committed to long haul, and uh, we're very grateful uh, by all of those remarkable leaders that we spent a little time with today for their extraordinary contribution uh, to rebuilding this community uh, and being an example uh, of resiliency uh, for hundreds of other communities across this state uh, that are struggling uh, to get through this extraordinary moment in our state's history. We're dealing and closing with an unprecedented number of fire starts in the last uh, 30 days. In fact, it was 29 or so days ago uh, that we started experiencing an unprecedented number of lightning strikes, uh, nearly 14,000 lightning strikes over a 72-hour period impacting the state, 1,100 fire starts that we've had to address 
in the last 30 days, 2.8 million acres in the last 30 days that have been destroyed, 3.2, close to 3.3 million acres so far this fire season. And compare that to last fire season, 277,000 acres through the entire calendar year. We're already at 3.2 million acres so far in 2020. And in 2020, we've experienced world record breaking temperatures in this state, in Death Valley, 130 degrees, the hottest recorded August in our history, a heat dome, the likes of which we've not seen, at least I haven't seen in my lifetime throughout the entire West Coast of the United States, 114 degrees in Burbank, 121 degrees in other parts of LA County. Uh, temperatures 3 a.m. along the coast at 103 degrees. Uh, I just stipulate it's not even, to me, debatable. It's not a belief system. It's about acknowledging science. It's not about believing in facts or not believing in facts. Facts are facts. Science is science. It's about acknowledging the science and acknowledging the facts uh, that the hots are getting a lot hotter. The dries are getting a lot drier. We are still struggling through the last five, six years where uh, we have been in drought conditions in this state. Uh, climate, uh, uh, well, climate change is real, uh, and so is our responsibility to do more on vegetation management and forest management. I don't see those as mutually exclusive. I see those as mutual responsibility of both the state, federal government, and private sector partners. And we're committed to more than doubling our forest management in the state and are committed to advancing more partnerships with the federal government. And that was part of the conversation we had today with the president. That happy to take any questions. Governor Newsom, uh you mentioned climate change. I'll use that as a segue into the uh, briefing had down in Sacramento today with President Trump. Um, did you get a sense of what he gained and took away from your conversation today and what the implications might be for uh, the state as it continues to fight fire? Well, I think it was important to remind the president of two points, and, and I don't mean this pejoratively or even paternalistically or in, in any way. Uh, dismissively, uh, but it was an opportunity to remind the president that 57% of the forested land in the state of California is under federal jurisdiction, just 3% under the state's jurisdiction. And while the president, I believe, is right, and we've long acknowledged this, my administration has substantially begun to address uh, the need to focus uh, more proactively on forest management, vegetation management, prescribed burns, and we've fast-tracked an historic number of projects just in the last 18 months, uh, that we can't do this alone. Uh, that we're going to need the federal government to step up in substantial ways. And so that was number one, very meaningful opportunity to directly make that case to the president. Number two, it was important to also make the case that the president and his administration have entered into an unprecedented partnership with the state and the U.S. Forest Service just a few weeks ago. This was lost with everything else. We worked over the last year to develop a partnership to commit to mutually uh, addressing over one million acres a year uh, of forest management. Again, it's a drop in the bucket, still inadequate, but it was a significant milestone. So I wanted the president to know that we have established a baseline of engagement that I'd like to build off of. So that was an opportunity. And yes, frankly, to, you know, at least state in a way that wasn't trying to take a cheap shot, wasn't trying to score political points, but to make the argument, we believe in climate change out here. And we don't believe it just because science says it, we observe it. We experience it, and uh, and that was an opportunity to remind him of a point he's very familiar with, but to do so in an honest and forthright way, and we did. And you were in paradise earlier um, where the campfire was in 2018, and now back here again with the, this current round of fires we're experiencing. Um, just to be back here again and, and see this this happening, I mean, what was it like just kind of to, you know, go back there almost two years um, to when that fire happened to get a sense from locals and, and other people in the community, what's changed since then? I've, I've been back a couple times in between, uh, in, including opening a school year last year. And I remember I was saying this in an event the other day. I remember being there uh, at the first day of school last year, and the teacher was telling me uh, that the kids uh, were experiencing PTSD when they saw fog, and they connected that fog with a fire and smoke. And so uh, it only expresses the obvious, the PTSD, those same kids must be suffering through, all of the community up here suffering through yet again to deal with another historic fire season. You look at the maps of these fire complexes and it's almost like a puzzle 
fitting exactly into where the burn scar was a few years ago with those 153,000 acres that, uh, that were part and parcel of the campfire, the, the narrative that is paradise. Uh, and now, of course, all the surrounding impacts of this year's fire season. So look, we have more to do. Uh, we are world-class suppression operation, Cal Fire, second to none, Office of Emergency Services, second to none, our mutual aid, second to none, 83 fire. Uh, engines are, have come from all over the United States. That mutual aid system is expressed beyond our borders. Uh, but a suppression mentality can't be a permanent mindset, meaning we have to focus on prevention. We cannot allow the conditions to fester. Uh, and that's why the issue, to me, the twin issues of forest management and addressing the root cause of why the hots are getting so much higher and the dries are getting so much drier is foundational to the fate and future of this community. You were in Butte County, I believe, on Friday, sometime last week. Why did you uh, want to come back so quickly? And should residents uh, expect, I guess, more visits during this? Yeah, I have a responsibility to this community. I have a responsibility to people that are in need to, to be more supportive and, and to be more helpful. And I look, I, I'm not naive. Good enough never is. Uh, it's pretty obvious. You know, 1,200 building permits uh, is not 12,000, uh, 300 plus housing. Uh, developments is not 3,000. I mean, we've got a lot of work to do up here. And, uh, and I, as I, I look, I, I try to hold to my commitments. I, you know, we can agree on certain issues. We can agree situationally, but sustainably, I'm here for the long haul to try to help support the rebuilding recovery uh, in this county. And uh, I want to be here not just to address issues related to fires, but also more broadly, the issues related to this health crisis, COVID, and the economic recovery that's part and parcel uh, of the future of this part of the uh, state. Look, I, I'm a fifth generation Californian. I grew up in a very furrow part, half the time with my dad in Placer County in a small community called Dutch Flat, literally mainstream Dutch Flat, uh, where the golden scoop was the only thing that mattered to me in my life, a little ice cream store. And it's pretty much the only business that's still operating there. Uh, and so I have deep respect and the sensibilities of rural California and, and uh, respect uh, our diverse communities, even if Folks weren't there in my election. I have a real responsibility to represent people. Uh, even if they're out there trying to support an effort to kick me out of office, I still have responsibility to those families in this community. You have a few more minutes if you have anything else. Gotcha. Uh, Esteban Reynoso with Action News Now. Um, Governor Newsom, um, so what you talked a lot about forest Sorry. management. What is kind of the plan for forest management heading forward? So let's uh, talk about where we are and may specifically answer the question moving forward. Uh, California more than doubled its uh, active forest management in the last calendar year. Uh, it was a modest 390,000 acres. The federal government was even more modest. They actively managed 200,000 acres. That's inadequate to the needs of the state. And so the commitment we made going forward, we marked a significant partnership, what we call a stewardship agreement with the U.S. Forest Service to get to a million acres a year. Uh, that's going to be a baseline commitment between the state and the federal government. It's the first time, though, we're collaborating and coordinating, sharing map, sharing technologies, and sharing resources. So it's a significant step in the symbolism and the substance, but it's a first step because we have to manage millions of acres a year, not just a million acres a year. I got one more question for you. Um, so what was kind of the thinking behind going up to Berry Creek and signing the bill before kind of addressing uh, the, the victims along with devastation and kind of pushing the climate change uh, thing first? What was kind of the thought process? Well, it's not a first. I've been up here uh, six or seven times focusing on suppression, focusing on rebuilding, focusing on recovery, focusing uh, on making sure that this community has the resources, including, by the way, uh, getting a number of what we refer to as FMAGs signed by the President of the United States, doing statewide emergency proclamations, which I had previously done for this community. So uh, all of those things were foundationally done. Uh, and also to express uh, not a closed fist, but an open hand uh, to support the community. We did all of that and we expressed the obvious uh, that when you are experiencing world record breaking heat in your state and you're experiencing a uh, decline in your snowpack during your lifetime, when you're experiencing five years of record drought and you're experiencing the reality of 163 million trees uh, that have died because of that drought, you're experiencing climate change. And for me, not to state that as self-evident and obvious, I think would be a dereliction of my responsibility, my uh, role as governor of California.
Thank you for that answer. One final question. Um, could we have been better prepared for this fire? There's some people saying that it took a, lot, a little while for resources to kind of get to this fire. Yeah. Do you think that we could have been better prepared in any way? I, it's, the answer is always yes, right? I mean, look, here's, here's the challenge we had, and it's absolutely true. I, I don't think this, <laughs> I've experienced it as a lieutenant governor and governor. I've been on so many fires over the last seven, eight years throughout this state. Uh, we've never been more stretched in our resources than over the last month. So anyone that wants to observe that, they're absolutely accurate in that observation and that reality. And while it's true, we have 14,600 folks, roughly 15,000 firefighters out on the lines today, uh, we need a lot more than that. And that's why we've asked for support. I was on the phone with Prime Minister of Canada, who's sending resources down here, Justin Trudeau, I was uh, thanking uh, Bibi Netanyahu for sending firefighter personnel from Israel. Uh, I want to express publicly, if I haven't done it enough, I'll say it again to Greg Abbott of Texas, who just sent 50 engines uh, from Texas, which is a huge help to help us up with fire uh, uh, near the Creek Fire. Uh, we have been blessed by folks as far away as New Jersey. Governor Murphy just sent uh, three engines out here uh, that came off uh, uh, this airplane just two days ago. And so we've been stretched by this unprecedented number of new strikes. And, uh, and while it's true that I put an historic amount of money into our CAL FIRE budget this year, including, by the way, supplementing after the budget was signed just a few months ago, an additional $72 million to hire 863 seasonal firefighters. Thank God we did that. Had we not done that, we'd have been even in worse shape. So look, this is all an experience uh, that is novel for all of us because we've never experienced this many acres burning in one calendar year in our lifetimes. Uh, it clearly is requiring us to do even more next year. One last question. I also have a question out of Mendocino County where the August complex is part of um, now the the largest yeah. ever wildfire. And you mentioned that a lot of that forest, that land is federal land. So I'm wondering, is there anything that can be done to get more local control or other measures that can be taken at the state or even county level to, I guess, have more control over some of that land? Yeah. I mean, you know, the August complex is now and, and it's officially the largest. It was, by the way, downsized with new mapping yesterday by about 100,000 acres, interestingly, but still nonetheless, just shy of 800,000 acres. It's the largest uh, we've ever experienced in this state. The bottom line of the stewardship agreement between the federal government and the state was to do just that, to begin to overlay and map our priorities, working with counties, working with cities, but more importantly, perhaps the 40 percent of forested land in the state that's owned by private sector, to make sure we're all on the same page, working more collaboratively to prioritize and execute much more uh, quickly and efficiently uh, our vegetation management efforts. Let me be specific. Last year, I signed an emergency proclamation not after an emergency, but before there was any major emergencies in order to fast track through some CEQA waivers, high priority vegetation management projects that were impacting 200 vulnerable communities. We took the example of paradise and we looked at the issues of socioeconomics. We looked at ingress, we looked at egress. We looked at people uh, that did not have access to vehicles. We looked at people that were in mobile home parks. We looked at all the surrounding communities and we prioritized those projects and efficiently and effectively moved projects that were 15 years in the queue and we got them all done within 15 months. We also have now directed 20 million additional acres be reviewed to fast track the environmental process on that land as well. So those two things are happening concurrent now with the new federal partnerships, concurrent with a deeper recognition uh, that we have a lot more work to do in an era of human impacted climate change.